everyone, let's take a look at Tesla's sentry mode, what it does, and whether or not it's actually useful. Tesla's factory alarm system has always been fairly limited in what it can do. At least in the US, it doesn't have any glass break detection, and it will only trigger if a door is opened while the car is locked. So, car is locked at the moment. And there it goes. Sentry mode seeks to improve upon that by using the two rear-facing side cameras and one of the front cameras in conjunction with the car's interior microphones to monitor the space around the car and record activity as necessary. When activity is detected around a car, a warning will appear on the screen, letting people around the car know that it is currently recording, and it will document the things that happened up to that point as well, so it seems that recording is continuous. And the system should both sound the alarm and send a push notification to your phone when either a door is opened or a loud sound is detected, like a glass break or something hitting your car, that sort of thing. Let's give it a try! To enable sentry mode, simply bring up the vehicle controls, tap on safety and security, scroll down to sentry mode, and tap to enable. And we start by just walking around the car to kind of simulate how it might behave in a parking lot or some kind of similar situation. So hypothetically, you wouldn't want it triggering while people are just walking by like this, uh, because, well, that would be a false positive and start filling up your flash drive with random junk. Okay, this time I'm gonna walk a little bit closer to the car to see if it triggers. So this is probably like someone walking between widely spaced cars at a parking lot, something like that. It doesn't seem to have triggered it. Since it didn't trigger at all in the last two attempts, I'm going to try walking much closer to the car, kind of like I'm squeezing between two cars in a parking lot. Uh, and so, I mean, maybe that triggered it? Let's, let's see here. Did that, did that do it? Nope. No, it didn't. So, uh, maybe I'll just try walking around to see if I can get it to trigger. Because this seems kind of inconsistent in how it triggers. No, nothing that time. I didn't see anything that time. Let's try from this direction. Did that do it? Nope. A little different, I'm gonna try walking by the front of the car this time and then coming around close down the side. And did that do it? Yep, that triggered it that time. Since walking around the car sometimes will and sometimes won't trigger the system, let me try walking by it like I did, except maybe I'll just stop and take a look. No, oh, there we go. Sentry mode activated that time. Interesting. Let's try approaching the rear driver's side door from the side and kind of loitering a bit over here. No, it doesn't look like the system has come on yet. So tapping, no. Oh, there it triggered, okay. So I think one of the things I'm learning, at least about the monitoring aspect of sentry mode, is that it isn't simply motion-based. Otherwise, waving my hand in front of the camera like this would trigger it. Walking by the car would trigger it, but doesn't always do that. Um, but what about the alarm? Let's see what triggers that. General loitering around the car will activate sentry mode, so it will start recording, but I could stand here and move around like this all around the car for as long as I want, and it won't set the alarm off. Similarly, things like knocking on the glass and knocking on the car, this is not enough to set off the alarm either, uh, despite it making noise. You need a pretty significant noise to set it off, it seems. Even general harassment doesn't set the alarm off. The alarm also doesn't trigger if you reach in, grab the seat release, drop the seat, take something out of the trunk, and run off. However, if someone were to break the glass in an attempt to get in, or if someone hit your car, well... Then things get a little loud. That's all well and good, but what sort of real-world applications does the system have? Well, if someone were to break any of your windows, you'd be alerted and you'd have video of the event on the flash drive in the car. You could use it in parking garages to catch people hitting your car while parking, or door digging your car while getting out. Thank you, random dude in the Hilton parking garage, for not doing either of those things. That said, the system as it is currently implemented does have some deficiencies. It is not, for example, going to set off the alarm if someone were to lightly key your car, or perhaps even key it a little more aggressively. It should, however, trigger the uh, sentry mode monitoring, so it should be recording that happening. However, the system has some blind spots in its camera coverage. Since Sentry Mode is only using one of the three front cameras, and it isn't the widest of them, there are significant blind spots at the front corners of the car, as well as the entire back of the car. So anything that's happening in the back of the car, the system cannot see at all. 
And even the side cameras that are rear looking that the system's using, those are pretty limited in what they can see as well, as you can see here. Despite not being able to see in the rear though, if someone were to hit the back of the car or throw something at the back of the car, the sentry mode system would activate, the alarm should trigger, and it will be recording. So if nothing else, you'll get a notification and if someone is to move into the field of view of any of the cameras um, after having done those things, it will record them. Perhaps in the future, Tesla will use the Model 3's interior camera for some kind of reach-in monitoring. So if someone were to reach in through an open window, the system would detect it and set off the alarm maybe, or perhaps that would just result in a lot of false positives. Better yet, don't leave your windows down. Another deficiency of sentry mode is its energy consumption, because normally when I leave this car to sit, I'll see about 1% of pack energy consumed per day idling. So that's two to three rated miles of energy consumed per day just sitting. With sentry mode enabled, however, that jumps to about one rated mile consumed per hour of sitting. So the car consumes about 26 rated miles in 24 hours with sentry mode on and minimal activation of the system. I did several trials and didn't really see much difference between triggering the car's recording mode frequently and leaving the car alone. It still worked out to about one rated mile consumed per hour of sitting with sentry mode on and some back of the napkin math that's probably somewhere in the ballpark of like a 240 to 250 watt continuous load. I even dove too deeply into how Tesla's managing the energy usage between the 12 volt system and the high voltage pack in the Model 3, but my suspicion is that it's entirely possible that running sentry mode frequently could add a lot of cycles to the lead acid 12 volt battery that runs most of the car's electronic systems. So yeah, that's not great, but I could be wrong. Anyway, that's about it for this video. Elon has hinted at future improvements for sentry mode, like being able to exclude work or exclude home or have it ask you every time you park the car whether you want to enable the system, that sort of stuff. Uh, let me know what you think about sentry mode in the comments below and what sort of features would you like to see added to sentry mode. As always, don't forget to rate and subscribe and I'll see you later. Hit your car. Nothing happens. There it goes.